Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Well, today's the day. It's update 16 day. And with any update, we're all waiting with much anticipation when the servers are down and for the update to take place. Frontier have already said that the patch notes will be sparse and the player base must discover the secrets of the update. But with the update rocking in conventionally anywhere between 3 gigabytes and 7 gigabytes, depending on the platform that you're using, and that's all down to platform stipulations, I don't think it's really going to be much. We've had a bit of an insight as to what's going to be here already in the shape of the Thargoid Scythe, that hunter-gatherer out there gathering up and picking up escape pods, for what reason, we really don't know. But so far, that's all we've been given privy to. So, now the patch notes are with us, let's take a look and see what it's all about. As always, if you like the videos you see and what we produce, please drop a like, a follow, and leave a comment. That'll certainly help us out and point us in the right direction to what you want to see from Elite Dangerous. So update 16 was meant to be released on the 31st of July, 2023. But as was announced, fair dues to the community management team, it was going to be delayed by 24 hours. Well, here we are now, 24 hours later, the servers are down and the patch notes are with us for update 16. So, what's in it, other than the Thargoid side that everyone seems to have laboured on about? So, with the patch notes now made available around about 20 past 8, uh, on the 1st of the 8th, 2023, one thing blatantly blazes out in red letters, where it says, Features of note added. Redacted to redacted. Hmm. Now this obviously refers to all the bits that they're not going to tell us that they want the community and the gaming community to go out there and do for themselves and to discover for themselves. Um, there's an awful lot of patches in here as well, but one thing of note that I think is really important to talk about as well is that, you guessed it, it's about the Thargoids. Well, new passenger evacuation missions have been added. Wealthy passengers will now be requesting expedited evacuation from locations affected by the presence of the Thargoids for additional credits. You know it, money talks. Or credit talks, apparently. The Thargoids will, as of this Thursday's maintenance tick ahead, retreat from any system where the hold on that system has been defeated. Previously, this would only occur for invasion systems, which totally makes perfect sense. And of course, this is all very Thargoid storyline heavy and a lot of commanders have been looking at this th Thargoid storyline and going okay Thargoids a little bit fed up of Thargoids now can we have something else like say for the explorers or for the traders something that's not a community goal there's a little bit of frustration mounting especially on the community that come to my streams on the weekends and 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 pipe up on my community posts as well on my YouTube channel it's not all about the Thargoids frontier. It's very important, there is a war going on, but people want something a little bit more. Next up is a sad announcement, but one that will be immortalized as long as the game keeps going. In honor of the late Michael Brooks, a new organization has been added to the game, the Brooks Galactic Tours. You can now find their adverts in most markets and their mega ship, The Legacy, which can be found in the Artemis near Freehome. Um, Brooks Galactic Tours have also established a new mini-series of tourist beacons to a handful of fantastic locations. The first of this series begins at the beacon at Freehome. We hope you enjoy exploring and will take a moment to pause and enjoy the wonders that might help bring to the universe of Elite. So I'm going to pause here through going through the patch notes just to mention that there's been no mention of the new Hunter variant, the Thargoid Scythe. Now we were given privy access to this on the partner program and the privileged creators that have been assigned to this were given some footage and some pictures. I've got a video out on this, uh, quite a few people have looked at it, quite a few people have commented, quite a few people have said, why is it always the Thargoids getting the new ships? When are we going to get one? And that all comes back to my previous comment where people are saying, oh, come on, it's not all about the Thargoids. Let's have another ship. Let's push a little bit of gameplay. Where's this Panther Clipper? Etc. Etc. But the Thargoid Scythe does seem to feature, even though not mentioned, in the Update 16 narrative. And so does the Thargoid War, as we've mentioned, in regards to all what's happening around the Tick and think what's going to be happening in regards to the Thargoids. Thargoids, 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 Thargoids. 
it's all about the Thargoids, unfortunately. But there are community issues of notes that have been addressed. And in regards to this, these are tickets logged to the help desk. That's what a community issue of note addressed. So we have found something, we've logged a ticket, and it's been addressed or not addressed, depending on how long you want to look at it. One of the best things on the first Wednesday pounded up was, was something fantastic and something that's really been irking me. And that was the release fees for impounded chips that are not the player's current ship. Now, these can now be paid, and that was all down to a particular ticket reference 59548. So if you're the lucky commander who logged ticket 59548 and your impounded ships were not being released because you couldn't pay the fee, then congratulations. It's been done. Happened to me a couple of times on my Corvette. Really irritating. I had to fly over, go to the ship, release it. I couldn't do it all remotely even though I had the credits and even though it had said it would be released. How irritating that was. But at least it's been addressed. And for me, if nothing else gets fixed, that was great. Because if you've been a naughty commander like I've been lately and you've been shooting people who you haven't been shooting and your ship's been impounded, well, congratulations, you can now get it out. There's also been a fix for the stuck recovery button. Uh, Put players exponentially far away. No idea what all that's about, to be honest, but there was a ticket raised for it. A fix for a large habitat building in tourism settlements, ignoring states, making more restored missions incomplete. Again, I'm sure it was a very valid thing. There are so many problems in regards to those missions, but they are getting better, to be honest. What we're seeing an awful lot of lately is when we go to a settlement mission um, and it's a power-up mission, there's already power on. And you're like, how am I going to do this now? Anyway... Moving on, uh, a fix for char gaff installation incorrectly being flagged as an outpost rather than a starport. Well, delusions of grandeur or, you know, small person syndrome. Um, hey, you want to be flagged properly, don't you? Whether you're a starport or an outpost. So that's good stuff. A small thing, but anything that impacts the game and gets it looking a little bit more, you know, as it should be is fantastic. A fix for Trevithic Vision incorrectly being flagged as an outpost. Okay, so they've gone through and they've gone to look at these these outposts and starport naming conventions and they've gone, hmm, that's not an outpost and that's a starport. And and they've addressed it. Great. They've also put a fix in for being unable to restock caustic sink launcher ammo until existing caustic has been purged from the module. Okay, I kind of thought that might just been by design, but no, it's been addressed, and that's great for all you Maelstrom mining commanders. Next up, there's been a fix for crash sites not always correctly containing the mission item. How frustrating is that? And a fix for points of interest spawning in locations they shouldn't, on undiscovered planets, for example. A fix has also been implemented to address a situation where bark mounds mounds would wrongly be indicated uh, as present at a location via the DSS, but would not be there. Okay, there you go. Um, Fix for being able to only accept one squadron application at a time and a fix for visual artificing in planetary rings. A fix for Thargoid interceptor energy surge detected notifications not triggering on their arrival. How frustrating that is, I tell you that for nothing. And a fix for fires inside buildings that Thargoid occupied settlements not being extinguished when venting via the atmospheric control panel. You gotta put the fire out. And when you do, and there's no air, the fire still burns. How irritating is that? A fix for Thargoid interceptors and missives being white and exerted hearts no longer glowing. A fix for deployed SRVs not returning in their previous position when owning... When the owning commander logs in after logging out whilst on foot. A fix for deployed SRVs not returning in their previous position when the owning commander logs in after logging out whilst on foot. I thought that was a feature so that you didn't lose the SRV. But apparently, hey, it's a thing and they've addressed that too. A fix for mining deposit fragments getting stuck inside the asteroids. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not a great miner. That doesn't really affect me, but it's good that they've addressed it. And a fix for the gunner role being unable to use the TG pulse neutralizer or shutdown field neutralizer. Well, yeah, if you're going to go in mob handed on a ship, you want someone to be arming that TG pulse neutralizer or the field neutralizer to take that strain off you flying the ship. 
or you can just do it all yourself, to be perfectly honest. I'm not exactly sure how many people go in there mob-handed on one ship to go and do things like that. It is a game dynamic, fair enough. But hey, there you go. Um, Thargoid interceptors will now be consistently recorded in the journal. Good for them. And a fix for player journals not always accurately logging Thargoid kills. Now, Thargoid, 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 Thargoid. Okay, a little bit on the missions, bit of caustic sync, bit of outpost renaming. There you go. Um, and the impounded ships. But as you can tell, as the Thargoid narrative is running through this, it is mainly Thargoid things that have been addressed from the community issues of note. Yes, folks, the next section, additional issues of note. Well, here we go. The gameplay section we're going to go through and the rest we're just going to reference because we'll be here all day otherwise. Um, crime scan results can no longer be evaded by relogging. Good. Messages received from the server whilst the player is in hyperspace are now queued until they exit hyperspace. Good, though I don't think I've really noticed that, to be honest with you. Commanders will now be able to target or plot a route to Titans or Maelstroms via their system map. Okay. I didn't think we couldn't. After joining a multi-crew session and assigning yourself the gunner role, assigned target turrets or utilities will not be reflected in the UI. This has now been fixed. On-foot wanted players can now access the shipyard terminal at detention facilities. I didn't even know there was a shipyard terminal there. I just thought your ship was just brought to you. Until I found out on a stream on the weekend that I had completely walked past that terminal and didn't see it. They needed a big neon sign saying, Terminal here. For me, obviously, because I'm visually challenged in that respect. But there you go. Camera shake now applies to all on-foot players when using Guardian objects at Thargoid imprint sites. And the raised maximum prices of freight carrier items. Um, they've raised the maximum prices of freight carrier items. Okay, so here's the further reading. Instead of the maximum price, the fleet carrier owner can set being 10 times the galactic mean price. <laughs> it's going to get heavy, this is. The slider goes up to 1,000%. They can now set it to 100 times the galactic mean price. So you can make more money on your markets. Uh, and this will apply to all three markets on the carrier. This decision was made to do this in consideration that some things are rare but have relatively low price. This means that commanders will now be able to sell them at a price that is worthwhile for the effort that went into to acquire them. I'm not really sure an awful lot of people go through that sort of economy as applied to the fleet carriers. I don't know. Is it much of a thing? Let me know in the comments if you're still with me, because this is quite a heavy set of patch notes. Anyway, moving on to the rest of the stuff. Um, rendering, the Thargoid interceptor lighting, hit VFX will no longer persist. Brilliant. They've done an awful lot of stuff around audio. They've done a bit around art and server crashes when logging in docked at a fleet carrier in a system that has a large amount of carrier traffic has been fixed as well. They've also fixed a crash where logging in docked at a port in a system from which the Thargoids have retreated. Um, for the UI, the Authorist now has a codex entry. Good for the Authorist. Recognition, that's what I say. And all Thargoid war-related passenger missions will now have a link to a relevant page of the pilot's handbook. Good for them. If you're trapped inside a container after logging at a point of interest, you will now be able to free yourself using a panel inside the container. Not add this. Interesting. I'm going to see if I can get that done. So if you go to a point of interest and there's been one of those cargo containers there and perhaps you get trapped inside um, because the game's crashed or you've had an error like a scarlet crate or God knows whatever else you're going to get, then there's a panel inside to let yourself out. Good stuff. Good, good safety feature. Health and safety in the galaxy. I like it. Coming up to now, just the missions. Passengers in evacuation missions now have a, are now a little bit more chatty. Good for them. And transport missions for Thargoid War effective ports no longer request non-essential commodities. Disconnecting after restoring power to a Thargoid occupied settlement during the mission will no longer reset the settlement to offline status when you log back in, allowing you to continue the mission without needing to source a second power regulator. Which is good stuff, because they really are good fun. So that's my breakdown of the update 16 patch notes. Hope you enjoyed it. It's gone on a little bit, isn't it? Let me know what you think in the comments if you're still with me. And thank you once again for the support of the channel. I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon.